production last year, the Home Front Army suffered nearly two million casualties through occupational accidents. Today, war plants, and in close cooperation with the United States Army Safety Program, experts are waging a nationwide fight to prevent accidents. Tickle of these men is this sick who ferrets out and removes the causes of accidents. Actual case histories. This one, for a while, had our safety sleuth completely baffled. Within one week, a number of operators tested at their work following periods of dizzy spells. Exhaustive scientific tests by the plant safety engineer had failed to reveal the cause. Puzzled, the sleuth decided to watch another operator as he worked at this press. This workman was in good physical condition, but then so were those who had fainted. The trained operator worked smoothly for a while, and then he began to show the same symptoms as were reported by the others. It looked as if he too would faint, but why? Suddenly, while the safety sleuth, the clue was discovered. What the investigator saw when he looked over the operator's shoulder was this. A protective grill with horizontal slats attached to the machine by some previous operator caused an almost hypnotic effect when the press was at work. By placing the grill slats in a vertical position and eliminating contrasting colors, fainting spells became a thing of the past. According to the records, most accidents are due to the human element. And when the term human is applied to this guy, my friends, it's sheer flattery, for he is Joe Brunswick Beetlebrain. We're using Beetlebrain throughout this picture to typify all of his kind. Here it's probably obvious to even the most inexperienced eye that the base of the ladder is too close to the building. And when added to this hazard, there appears a distracting influence, such as this. Well, what you think will happen, does happen. No! Well, he's the kind of a guy who never makes the same mistake twice. He can always figure out new ones. Thank you, Bub, for a lovely demonstration. Yes, the number of ladder accidents reached an alarming figure until a safety sleuth worked out a simple solution. With these non-slip safety shoes on the feet of a ladder and placed in proper position, even a beetle brain couldn't make the thing slide. Now, with safety feet in place, did this eliminate all ladder accidents? Well, dear people, I can't explain why, but you'd be amazed how many mugs actually go down a ladder this way. And with this result. A good thing he's the indestructible man. The ladder casualties go to the hospital. In this file, the safety sleuth has recorded a different application of safety principles. It pertains to the process of filling large oil drums. In a certain plant, this work frequently resulted in an accident which, to say the least, was most unpleasant for birds like beetle brain. This quaint old method of determining when the drum was full often finished thus. Well, that's one way to find out. But aside from being a bit tough on one's clothes, one's skin, and one's equanimity, it is also apt to affect one's equilibrium. John Bob? No longer need a body battle a gooey gusher, and no longer need a body suddenly contact the concrete in a bone bruising bounce. Oil spillage becomes but a memory when the drum is filled on a scale, provided, of course, the flow is shut off when the dial hand reaches the combined weight of the drum and its oil capacity. Simple enough. And here, another interesting case history solved by our sleuth. Workmen were often getting into trouble at this drinking fountain. Not that, that only happened to him, but always. To take a drink at this fountain was a rather hazardous procedure. My goodness, yes. 
And so, our investigator decided to give this danger zone some personal observation. <laughs> it looks like he's got a feud on with that thing. Anyway, it happened again. Is there a dentist in the house? And so, as the victim became known as Snaggletooth Sam, the mystery was solved. A glass partition with dark curtains behind it formed a mirror. Instead of looking where they were going as they approached the fountain, most gals looked into the mirror to primp. The cure, a light curtain to replace the dark one, will stop all reflection, primping, and the loss of pretty white teeth. Accident prones. An accident prone, my friends, is a person prone to accidents. This is the curious case of a capable carpenter who suddenly began to go haywire. Ouch! Hmm, imagine this happening to a capable carpenter. What was wrong with him? Liquor? Loose living? An overindulgence in apple strudels, maybe? Nope, none of these. Yet, he even put the wrong end of a cigarette into his kisser. That he did. And the next day... Folks, are you ahead of me? Of course you are. Mm. Well... Yes, something seemed to be bothering this carpenter. And so, unable to do a good job at his trade, he was demoted. But even at this work, he was a flop. And I do mean... Flop! Thus, when the unhappy guy received a call from the safety engineer to drop in for a chat, well, he did. My, my, poor man. A hopeless case? Not at all. The trouble with him was worry. Worry over unpaid bills and hounding creditors who were hot on his trail. He just couldn't keep his mind on his work. It was a familiar story to the safety sleuth who promptly arranged for the systematized handling of the victim's financial problems. The result, goodbye accident prone, hello capable carpenter. Freak accidents are the kind you think can't happen until they happen. Here, dear patrons, we read something out of a Max Sennett comedy of 30 years ago. Yet, it's an actual case history of a recent mishap. This beetle brain's problem was to lower to the ground a barrel of bricks. <laughs> Cheer up, pal. It's the end of the picture. Nothing more can happen to you. Pardon me, pal. My... Well, goodbye now. <laughs>